Anthony is the type of person that wants what he can't have. He lost it after a 1440p 27 inch IPS monitor, and when he finally got one, he started looking for two more. Go figure. Naturally, when he saw the announcement of 34 inch IPS ultra wide monitors, also 1440p, he got pretty excited in his. <laughs> With up to four terabytes of massive storage capacity combined with SSD-like performance, Seagate's solid-state hybrid drives are the fastest way to have it all. Now, I think everyone has heard of the LG 34UM95 by now. If you haven't, it's a 34-inch IPS monitor with a 21 by 9 aspect ratio at a resolution of 3440 by 1440. This makes it an excellent monitor for productivity, gaming, and movies, which is like, what else do you even look at on a monitor? It gives you an extended field of view without needing to turn your head like triple monitors, and there's no bezel in the middle. The addition of uh, the high-quality IPS panel means that colors on the outer edges don't get washed out or tinted thanks to the poor viewing angles of a typical TN. There are a lot of things to like about this monitor. It's got a very slim bezel, it has a four-way joystick that's positioned for easy access, and the plastic stand blends into your environment giving your monitor a floating look. There are a couple of drawbacks to it at this price though. The uneven backlighting found on some of them, as well as the lack of any height adjust whatsoever, although it does thankfully have a vase amount, unlike its curved brother. Anthony spent about a week using this monitor as his main display and obviously fell in love with it. I personally used it as my main display for quite some time. He primarily games at his photos and watches movies on his computer, so it was a perfect fit. He did note that for TV shows or YouTube, it was a little disappointing knowing that he couldn't use the monitor to its full potential and it had black bars on the edge, but I mean, it's kind of like, you know, TVs going 16 by nine and you had to stretch your zoom and it's kind of like a lot of content being 21 by nine and we have 16 by nine monitors and you end up with black bars on the top. So it is what it is. Black bars are not going away or are they? Suddenly another damsel came along to pull Anthony away from his first true love. The new mistress was slimmer yet curvier at the same time. She was even more beautiful to look at. Not a single person walked by without turning their heads, but she didn't care about that. She gave Anthony all her attention and she moved in ways the LG could only dream of. Her name wasn't very sexy, but none of that mattered when you stared deep into her pixels. Wow, that was terrible. Uh, this is the Samsung S34E 790C. What it lacks in awesome naming, it makes up for with this sexy, curved 34 inch VA panel. And if that wasn't enough, it is even height and tilt adjustable. Now you might go, what, VA panel? I remember when those were cool, uh, but actually VA panels are still cool. Right out of the box, this measured a solid 99% sRGB rating with the Spider 3 Elite calibrator that these guys use. After calibration, it could handle 100%. And as for backlight bleed, non-existent with this bad boy. In fact, the black levels are some of the deepest, richest blacks available outside of an OLED display where the pixel actually turns off and stops emitting light when it wants to be black. Both monitors have a resolution of 3440 by 1440 and a refresh rate of 60 hertz, a maximum brightness of around 300 candela per meter squared, a meaningless contrast ratio. I mean, okay, I shouldn't say completely meaningless. Uh, VA panel will tend to have a better contrast ratio thanks to its deep blacks, and a four to five millisecond gray to gray response time. One big difference, however, is Inputs. LG supports Thunderbolt with daisy chaining, which could be invaluable for any Apple users out there, while Samsung does not. Now, like me, at first, Anthony thought the curved screen would be gimmicky and pointless. But after using them back to back, he, that's very extreme, sir. He says he cannot live without it now. The curved effect is subtle, but it actually is very natural feeling. And like a famous being once said, when you do things right, people won't be sure you've done anything at all. So going back to the flat panel, the corners suddenly feel very, distant. Now, is this monitor for everyone? 
we'd have to say no for now until the content and price uh, catches up with the mainstream consumer. Both of these displays are only for affluent enthusiasts or working professionals who can justify it in terms of the productivity that they gain or the decor in their office looking nicer. And I mean, if you just needed a display for watching movies on, you're probably better off buying a 40 inch TV as you'd have roughly the same viewing area even after adding black bars. For the hardcore gamers out there, Again, kind of a tough sell because you might want to see a higher refresh rate and lower response times. But for those of you out there who do want one to do it all and have the wallet for it, these are an amazing single monitor experience. But do yourself a favor and find a physical store that displays a curved monitor because it's worth seeing in person before you go ahead and drop the money, especially because not all curved monitors are created the same. We've spent some time with smaller curved displays and quite frankly, the general feedback is it doesn't make nearly as much sense to try to curve to accommodate your field of view when it's only sitting there occupying about this much of it. So let us know in the comments whether you'd want a single 34 inch ultra wide monitor or if you'd prefer some different monitor setup. Like and subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX, and I think we are pretty much done here. Psst. Hey, LG, we wouldn't mind reviewing your Curve 34 UC97. Actually, you guys should get the uh, the 90 or the 87. That one's height adjustable, same panel. Okay, LG, that one.